Hi, my name is Sandy, and I'd like to welcome you to Call from the Desert Ministries. Today we're going to give you a little overview of what we're about, what you can expect to us, and how we can help you. Um, basically, we want to help you serve the Lord in a deeper way, so we're going to go into how we can help you do that. So first, let's talk a little bit about who we are. I'd like to get to know us a little bit. My husband and Greg and I started this ministry, so who are we? What are we all about? You can see here, this is me in front of my car, and yes, we do have an electric car, uh, and we're, we live out in the country. We actually have 50 acres out in the country. We butt up against BLM land, so you can see our, our mountain back there. We have an unobstructed view um, of the mountain. We have a really great mountain view. So I'm a country girl. I like living in the country. I was born and raised in the country. I moved to the city for quite a while. I lived in the Phoenix area for 23 years, but my husband and I decided we wanted to go back to the country. We were born and raised together, and we like living in the country, so we went back to the country. Some of my hobbies, I like to hike. I like to be out in uh, nature. So I like to hike, see what God created. I love to sew. So here lately, I've been into quilting. And I love animals. Um, my husband and I have a couple of little dogs that we rescued. So you might hear them bouncing around here and there. Um, we rescued them. They're a part of our family. They're, they're the spoiled part of our family. But we really love them. We love them to death. And um, we just like to take care of them, take them for walks, stuff like that. We also have a little horse business where horses come and when they want to rest, no, actually it's the owners, they bring their, their horses and they can let their horses out, rest them, and then um, they go on their merry way to their next destination. So we do have a horse business where overnight board horses that people that are traveling through with horses. I do have a bachelor's degree. I am trained in the Bible. I have a bachelor's degree in Bible and theology. So I have that training. I also have had a lot of extensive training with the mentally ill. We have a prison ministry. I've done teaching in the church. So I don't just come by this. This is not just something I started fly by night. We've had a lot, a lot of experience in ministry and also in Bible training. I am anointed to teach and to disciple people. It's my great joy to bring people to a higher level in the Lord. That's what I love to do. So I love to study, but I also love to teach, and I like to teach discipleship. I like to teach something that's a little different or unusual, something that you maybe haven't heard before, something that's uplifting your soul, and also something that will bring you to a higher place in the Lord. So this is my husband, Greg, and I'm going to let him talk about himself and, and tell you a little bit about him. Well, thank you, Sandy. I appreciate that. As you can see, I'm a bit of a photographer. I love the wide open country. Um, you can see a little bit more of the mountains in the background in this picture of me and um, with my camera taking some pictures. I also enjoy hiking, and I like writing um, different kinds of things, uh, fiction and nonfiction a lot of uh, scriptural kind of study, Bible studies and so forth. And uh, like I said, I like photography. I also have served uh, the Lord in different capacities. I served as a Sunday school teacher. I was a deacon at a church, and I was involved in outreach ministry um, and did that for several years. I do have background in Bible. I've been, uh, I have four years of Bible college training and that was in the pastoral ministries um, major. So I do have some training as well. And uh, I share with Sandy her passion to help people um, and to bring them to a deeper and a higher level uh, in their spiritual life and their Christian walk. Um, and so you can see there I have experience in ministry. Um, I was a radio announcer for many years in the Colorado area. And um, I love to not only announce and talk, as you can see, but I also like to sing. Um, the Lord has given me um, a talent to play the guitar, and I love to sing praise and worship music. And so that gives you a little bit of background of who I am. Okay, thanks, Greg. And my husband and I just give you a little bit about more background. We started Call from the Desert Ministries to help you grow and discover who you are in Christ. We like to educate, enlighten, and inspire Christians to a higher level of service 
to the Lord. It's not all about the Lord serving us. It's how can we serve Him. And that's where we like to help you guys discover where the Lord wants you to be. And we want to bring revival, maturity, and vision back to the body of Christ. The Bible says, where there's no vision, my people perish. So once you get a vision for what you're supposed to do, revival will come to your heart and you'll obtain maturity because you need to grow into that vision that the Lord has given you. So go into a little bit about what we believe, okay? So I'd like you to answer this question for me. Do you remember who you were before the world told you who you should be? So think about that for a minute. What were you born to be? And then the, the world tells you what you should be. I actually got this from a positive thinking friend of mine. Sometimes I like listening to positive thinking stuff. There's stuff about how people overcame tremendous odds and went on to do great things. I like hearing that. I don't like all of the positive thinking stuff, but I do like some of it because they do make you think about where are you supposed to be and how are you going to get there. And I believe this is Bible because the scripture tells us we're fearfully and wonderfully made. This is how God made us. He made us wonderfully. But it's like almost from the beginning of our lives, the world and the devil try to screw us up and tell us we're worthless and tell us we don't have anything to do. But the Lord has a wonderful, wonderful thing for us to do. This is what he says, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have it entered into the heart of men the things which God has prepared for those who love him. This is in 2 Corinthians 2, 9. And what we believe is that when you're serving God the way the Lord um, called you to do, this is when you're the happiest and you're the best. And this is when you're living that abundant life that he promised us. The most important thing is your anointing. It's not your education or your training, but what are you anointing to do? And what the anointing shows you is, what is it that the Lord wants you to do? That's the main thing that it show, the anointing shows you. Is where are you supposed to be? What are you supposed to do for Him? And how are you going to get there? It's kind of a road map. You don't take a journey without knowing where you're going. And you have a road map on how to get there. In life, you need a road map. You need to know where you're going, but you also need to know how you're going to get there. That's what the anointing shows you. The anointing also shows you what are your spiritual gifts. What are you gifted with? People are given spiritual gifts. That's in the Bible. We're given various gifts. So what is your gift? And we'd like to help you find out all of these things. Education is important. We do believe it is important to be educated because how can you lead people without a basic knowledge of the Bible? Okay, a lot of people that serve the Lord did not know too much about the Bible. They were not educated people. The disciples, they were fishermen and they were tax collectors and people like D.L. Moody. They didn't have a lot of education, but they gained education because they needed a basic knowledge of the Bible in order to serve the Lord. Uh, many people today also always think we need to know the New Testament only. But however, there's a lot of great things in the Old Testament. I studied the Old Testament here recently, and there were a lot of things that really changed how I felt about the Lord. And it brought my Christian walk to a higher place because I studied the Old Testament. And this is some of the things I want to go to into, some of the Old Testament teachings. We have a creed also. Something that we believe in is a creed. And here is our creed creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth for all that is seen and unseen. We believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. We came down from heaven, was in, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, 
who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe when in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. Catholic there just meaning universal, not the kind of Catholic church we think about today, but the universal church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. So have you ever heard this? If you've been a Catholic, I'm sure you've heard this before. It's called the Nicene Creed, and Catholics usually recite this. But where did it come from? Well, it came from the Council of Nicaea back in 325 A.D. This was around the time the New Testament was being canonized, and people were struggling with their beliefs in Christianity back then. Uh, they didn't have the New Testament yet, and the Old Testament, the New Testament fathers were gone. The apostles were dead, and they were just struggling with what they should believe. So the Nicene Creed came out of a council that they had, and it's called the definition of Christianity. So we believe in the definition of Christianity. And now I'd like to go into a little bit about what it's not about, what we're not going to talk about too much. We don't want to get too negative here, but we want to talk about what we're not going to talk about. And one of them is politics. Um, I don't want to get political. I don't really care what your political affiliation is or who you're going to vote for. That's private between you and the Lord and you and who you're going to vote for. Um, I don't want to get into politics because politics don't solve any problems. We just get into a lot of arguments about it. Uh, abortion rights and gay marriage, we're not going to get into that too much. As Christians, we all know what we should believe about that. But um, I, we believe that only true revival is going to overcome these issues. Change of heart. So let's talk about Jesus. Let's talk about how he can change our heart, how he can get us to a higher place in service for the Lord. And let's not talk about these issues too much. Okay. Also, we're not going to talk too much about end time prophecy. I believe it's way overdone these days. You know, that's a lot of what we're talking about. So we're not going to talk about it too much. It can be very divisive because um, there's so many different things. There's, um, what is it, the pre-trib rapture, the post-trib rapture, the mid-trib rapture. There's amillennialists. There's premillennialists. There's postmillennialists. We can go on and on forever. So we're not going to get into this too much because it can be very divisive and it can be very overdone and it can be very distracting because it takes away from other things that we need to learn on how to serve God. So what can we do for you? Um, what is it that we want to do for you? And how can we help you? Well, first and foremost, we want to get personal with you. Okay? We want it to be personal. We want to inspire you and we want to pray for your needs. So we're going to have a conference call every week and we're going to take your prayer needs at that time when we have the conference call. We're giving give you a chance to inspire us um, by giving you a praise report or you give us a praise report. What has the Lord been doing for you in the past week? So we want to know this stuff. How, how has he made you an overcomer? Um, what has he done for you? And give us a chance to get to know you a little bit better. We have Facebook. We have forums. We have all kinds of things we can go on. And we do get to know people. But the more we engage, the better we get to know each other. So this is what it's about. We want to get to know you better. Uh, so if you don't have a pen and paper, grab one. Because this is where uh, I give you the information on an inspirational talk for your daily walk. We have this every Wednesday evening. It's going to be at six o'clock in the at, in the evening uh, Pacific time and nine o'clock Eastern time. And here's the number. It's one seven one two four three two three zero six six. And once you enter that, you have to enter a code. The code is seven five eight five six nine. That's how you get in, and I'll open it up most of the time for everybody to talk. Now, this is not for you to get negative. You want to keep it positive. We want to keep it on the Lord. Um, if you had a bad day, we'll pray for you, but we don't want to get into negative. We don't want to get into politics. This is keeping it positive, okay? Now, how can we help you? What, what are we going to do for you? 
Well, we like to increase your knowledge of the Bible. Okay, that's one of the things we want to do. We have Bible studies. We increase your knowledge of the Bible. Help you discover your calling. We go back to this. We're, we're into discipleship, okay? Um, so many Christians are just floating through life. They don't know what they're supposed to do. Um, we want to help you discover what you're supposed to do and help you get there. Okay, what has God called you to be? If you're a Christian and you're on this planet right now, you're called to do something. So what is it? Help you with your finances. Um, a lot of people struggle with their finances. And I don't believe we're supposed to struggle so much. And the reason why is because biblically it says we're supposed to help people. Here's what it says. You will be made rich in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. Okay, so why are you made rich? So you can be generous. So you can be generous to your church, to a ministry, to somebody that's suffering. And why? So you can bring thanksgiving to God. That's, that's why you need finances. It's not for yourself. It's not so you can have a big house and a big car and a bunch of bling. But it's so you can be generous to other people. Also, I'd like to help you with your health. I just read um, a thing on Facebook about how baby boomers' health is not as good as their parents. And I believe that's true because our health in this country is failing. I am a certified nutritionist. Along with everything else, I am certified in nutrition. And uh, it's natural nutrition. It's not chemicals. I don't like chemicals, and I'll go on that to a minute. But I believe when your, your body, your mind, and spirit work together. So if your health is failing, the whole your whole being doesn't work like it should. I was actually chemically poisoned. That's why I don't like chemicals, because I worked in a chemical plant, and I became chemically poisoned. I suffered with it for 16 years. Now, the Lord gave me healing. I am much better now, and my mind and my body and my spirit work a whole lot better. But when I suffered with this, I wasn't at my best. So we want to help you get back to your best so you can serve the Lord and be the best that you can be. Can you hear me, Greg? Yes, I can. Got anything to put in there? Not at that point. Yeah, just that... that one of the things about the health um, uh, aspect is that once the Lord healed you and used natural um, uh, nutrition to do that, uh, you've continued to stay on that path for several years using natural um, and nutrition, natural nutrition to continue um, with your healthy being. And because of that, um, we have both benefited not only spiritually but physically and we are excited about that because what we discovered we want to pass on um, many times people um, go to the doctors and they seek um, medical advice and a lot of chemicals are added to their um, daily lives when if we would just go to the natural and uh, let the natural and let the body heal itself and then the spirit will then be rejuvenated and continue. So I just wanted to add that because it's some people kind of excuse that and that's not really important, but yet it, it is one of the most important. Exactly. And I, I did lose a hundred pounds also because of the health thing. I got back to health. So how are we going to help you out here? Okay. Let's get back to that. We have webinar studies every week. Every month I'll be coming out with a new and different Bible study, kind of a theme for the month, okay? Um, I'm going through different kinds of studies as time goes on. I'm going to go through finances. I'm, like I said, I'm going to go through the Old Testament. i got a myriad of studies. I'm going to go through health. I can go on for years with all this stuff I have, but I'll be letting you know what it is that I'm going to be studying as time goes by. 2014, I'm going to be completely dedicated to how to serve God in a deeper way. That's what we feel like the Lord has put on our heart. And this is what we're going to be teaching is how to serve God in a deeper way. How to get back to serving God. Okay. Um, I give two lessons per month. The cost for these lessons is going to be $24.97 a month. 
So it's not, not real high priced. You'll get two lessons and four live webinars. So you'll have, uh, if you can't attend, they'll be recorded. So it also includes the Bible study. You'll get study guides. So you get two study guides, four live webinars. Okay. The lessons are on my website per, for purchase at any time. Okay. You, they're there right now. And the webinars are going to be every Tuesday evening from uh, 6 o'clock Pacific time and 9 o'clock Eastern time. And, and, they will, and they are starting now after the new year. I'm going to make it fun, okay? I'm going to do some fun things. We're not going to just have all work all the time, so we're going to do some fun things. I've created contests for every lesson just to make it fun, just to have some fun while we do this. And they're going to be like gift certificates, and they're going to be for at least $50, and they're going to be things on vitamins, restaurant discounts, sunglasses, and more. So if you win one, I'll be giving you a call, and you can tell me what you want, and then I will send you a gift certificate so that you can redeem it to get some fun stuff for yourself, okay? I'm, I'm going to do it, another program called Share the Wealth. I want to spread the wealth around because... Maybe there's a ministry you want to give to or somebody you want to help you want to help out in your church. So the way this works is authors write books. Um, the guy that wrote um, Purpose Driven Life, he made a whole lot of money writing, writing that book. I think he made over $24 million or something like that. And I'm sure that if you read it, you recommended this book to your friends, but you didn't get paid for sharing it, right? You, they didn't make any money. So if you like what I'm doing and you want to share it with your friends, I will pay you. And this is how I pay you. I'll give you 60% and I'll keep 40%. So you, so $25, you will get um, $15 and I'll get $10. That's, that's how it works. And you need to call me. Um, to get involved, you need to call me. I'm going to have to show you what to do. So you're going to have to be on your computer, and I'll show you what to do. Here's the numbers. Write those down. They're 575-546-1115 or 480-332-8265. I'll show you how to get started and how to get paid for your classes. Actually, it's easy to get paid for your classes. If you recommend two of your friends, that's 30 bucks a month. So you'll get paid back for the classes and they won't cost you anything. But there's a catch. <laughs> you got to attend at least three of the webinars each month. Okay, I'm live. You got to be on them live to get paid. Because I want to know that you are getting the information. Now, if you really can't make the webinars and you want to be a part of it, just let me know and um, we can work something out. But I have to know that you are getting the information. I don't want you passing on to your friends and you don't know what's in the lessons, okay? And the person with the most um, people that they recommend that makes the most money are gonna get retreat prizes. And let me go into what the retreats, so what are they? Well, let's go into them. Okay, the retreats, I'm gonna have two retreats in 2014. The first one's gonna be June the 27th through the 29th of 2014. It's going to start on Friday evening and go through Sunday afternoon. We're going to do some really exciting things, and I'll get into that. Um, the next one's going to be October the 17th through the 19th in 2014. So those are the two weekend retreats that I'm going to have. And here's where it's going to be. Um, it's called the Spirit Canyon Lodge. It's in a remote part of New Mexico. Okay. Um... So it's a great getaway because it's very remote there, okay? Um, I'm going to only take 10 to 15 people. This is a small place. I want to keep it small. I want to keep it intimate. The whole idea is to keep it intimate. And we're going to have teaching on God's Word. That's one of the things we're going to do. We're going to have seminars with teaching on God's Word. That's the main thing we're going to do. Time alone with God, all right? It's remote. So there's not too many people up there. So you'll have time... Um, on Saturdays mostly, um, to go out and just seek out a place by yourself. Take your Bible with you. Let the Lord speak to you. Let nature speak to you, you know. Um, let the Lord speak to you through nature. What is it that He's telling you, okay? And we're going to hike around a beautiful mountain lake. There's a lake right across the street from that place. So 
we're going to do a hike on Saturday morning. Not that long. It's only a couple of miles. No up and down stuff. So it's not really that difficult, but it is a very, very pretty hike. Um, and we're going to have some awesome raise, praise and worship. My husband's a great praise and worship leader. So we're going to do some praise and worship. So anything else you want to add to that, Greg? I was just going to add that um, along with that remoteness <laughs> is a lot of times the atmosphere in which we are in will help us um, connect with God. I know my experience in the past has been when I'm out in nature and I have a Bible with me, um, and I can read God's word right there in nature. It is just an awesome, awesome thing. Um, and you know, you can go just about anywhere, but when we get together and do the praise and the worship, and then we um, depart and go our uh, individual ways to uh, talk to the Lord on a personal level, this resort gives us that great opportunity. And I'm excited about it. We've been there. It's one of our favorite places to go to um, as we go to hikes. And we just know that the Lord is in that place. We can feel him there. And I know that he is everywhere, but it's just really, really a beautiful place. It is. And sometimes there's special anointings in places. And we feel like this one is specially anointed. It's called Spirit Canyon Lodge. So the spirit is there, right? The person who refers the most people is going to get a $250 off of a retreat ticket. And they cost $500 per person for the weekend and $750 per couple. So if you want to bring your wife, you know, and bring her for free, or if you just want to come by yourself and, and you don't want to pay $500, if you refer the most people, um, I'll give you a little bit of a discount there. But it's going to be an awesome weekend. Okay, it's going to be an awesome, awesome weekend. Uh, so here's how you get started and to get to the lessons. You do www.callfromthedesert.com slash new offers forward slash. So get started today. If, it, if you're interested, get started today. And I want to leave you with something. Um, this is from a friend of mine. She's almost 85 years old now. And she gave me this. It's on her wall. Her and her husband were actually... Um, missionaries to the Philippines. They spent 15 years in the Philippines. And then they came back and came back to Albuquerque, New Mexico. They planted two churches in Albuquerque. Her husband died in 2005 and she thought she was done, but the Lord wasn't done with her yet. So she started a prison ministry where she works with prisoners. She got remarried. And I was just talking to her. She said, I love what I do. She says, I want to live to be 100 years old because I just love what I'm doing. I can't think of anything that I would rather be doing. And so she's got a real heart for the Lord. And she gave this to me. She says, care more than others think is wise. Risk more than others think is safe. Dream more than others think is practical. Expect more than others think is possible. Attempt something so impossible, and unless the Lord intervenes, it will surely fail. These thoughts can lead to a very exciting life. So, Greg, you have anything more you want to say before we end? No, I really don't. I think that uh, what you said is right. I like uh, the very last um, quote there. Attempt something so impossible that unless the Lord intervenes, it will surely fail. And, folks, that's what we have done. We are attempting something really impossible um, to a lot of people. But we believe the Lord is in this. And with you joining us, we will help you uh, develop a deeper and a um, much higher level of spirituality and walk with the Lord. And that's our desire. So thank you for joining us. And join us again.